This is the stuff that just drives you nuts. Turns a relatively short job into a long, long job. This obviously is the stator side of the KZ900. I'm trying to change the stator out, which I already did. Put it back on, putting all the bolts in. I had checked all the holes, especially this one. This is the bolt that came out of it. You can see the end of it. I saw that immediately and said, oh shit, he ran in into the bottom of the hole. It is a blind hole. It's one of the holes at the top here that holds this this thing on, whatever, whatever the hell this is called besides a heat shield, aftermarket or otherwise. So I'm guessing that when he went to put this on, the bolt was too short and, or it stripped out and he just went to use a longer one. Anyway, I had this all installed. I had the wire run. I was getting ready to button it up and I found this. I wasn't obviously trying to use this. I was gonna use another bolt and I couldn't get any of the thread in properly. So I said, oh shit, those threads are screwed up. So uh, I've done what I've done before, because it's a, a recessed, recessed hole, that's the problem. There's a um, guide pin, knock pin that goes in here. It's one of the two pins that lines up the stator cover so the stator doesn't hit the rotor, you know, from misalignment. And uh, here's that pin in the puller still. So that is a recessed thread. It's recessed about that far, okay? so. What I did at that point with the cover on, I had the bright idea, and I've done this before with some success, with pretty much all success, to um, run a tap in from the outside, a long tap. I have these long M6 taps. They are smaller than the hole, the clearance hole that these, uh, and the cover, for example, that the bolt goes through. And I started to get some progress going. I went a little bit further, and I broke the tap. And I had a heart attack. Literally. I just got back from the ER. Just kidding. Through a little bit of ingenuity, I got the tap out. Amazingly. It wasn't very hard in there as far as torque. It was just kind of bound up on some of the chips. How I did that, and I didn't film it because I was in the middle of a heart attack, was this. I was able to get in with these tiny little, um, little needle deck pliers. And you can see, either, you can get pretty much on either side of a flute. And it was enough clearance in here to get that. Actually, it'd be this way because that's the end of the tap, the business end. All right. So I try to turn it out. Naturally, these things start to, to, you know, to spread out. So I just took a pair of channel locks and then just was able to reinforce the end and it come right out. I was able to get it out with no problem. And my heart attack went away. So then I said, well, let me try it. So I just took another bolt and I can't get a bolt to thread in. And upon further inspection, the, the leading threads in here, I can't really show you that. I mean, it would be, well, let me try. I'll try to show you that. You can see that the uh, threads toward the front, see that little ridge, almost like a end of the counter bore? That's really where the thread should start. And the only place we got threads is about halfway between that and the, where the whole, um, you know, dead ends. So the threads are gone. The reason why the threads are gone is pretty obvious. Um, because he essentially jacked the threads out by bottoming it in here. Now, I don't know why he left it this way. He must have felt it, but pretty shoddy work. So my next attempt to save it is, uh, which is, you know, I couldn't really do this from the outside. I should have taken it off and tried, but it didn't matter anyway. I tried an M6 thread chase, didn't work. The threads are just gone. So I have no choice but to helicoil this, um, and it's going to be real, real tricky. So um, I figure I'd show you how I do it because it is a tricky hole. Not even gonna make any uh, said the wife puns, except I already did, didn't I? So we're all masked off here for uh, chips. I'm gonna put a little WD in there. I got the tap drill for the uh, M6 helicoil uh, in, the ch in the drill. Let's take it out for a moment first, talk about it a second. But I have the depth set. I measured it with a little straw, you know, from a spray can. And the first thing I'm gonna check though is to make sure that we're not gonna cut any of that counter bore out, which we're not. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do in a situation like this. A hole like this, you don't have to worry about that. But since we have that pin, which is really critical in this situation, I want to make sure it's not going to do that. It's not going to cut that out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make a new pin. And that'll be a pain in the ass. All right, so the other thing that we want to do is we actually want to take a helicoil tap. And we're going to double verify this is a uh, M6 helicoil tap, which it is. M6 by one, all right? Make sure that doesn't do it either. It's close. Okay, it's close. 
but it's not going to affect the counter bore here, this uh, area for the pin, unless, unless this thing goes in crooked. This is why this hole is so tricky. Really important to get this as straight as possible, because if we're off one way or the other, two things. Number one, the threads are not going to line up to that counter bore straight, and then when you put the pin in, and when the pin goes back in, all right, the pin here, the locate the knock pin, um, it's not going to want to let that bolt go in properly because if the threads are off, this is a very close tolerance to the pin. So we can't have, this is going to go straight no matter what. It's going to be in the center of that hole because the pin is essentially going to be a guide for it. So if we're off on the threads, we're going to have a hard time. So again, I'm going to take this real easy and I'm going to try to make sure that I am as square as possible. And this is how I'm going to do that. All right, so I took one of the bolts for the, the sprocket cover, a little spacer, a nut, and a one, two, three block. That's what's nice about these one, two, three blocks. They got through holes and threaded holes for doing shit like this, usually for setup on a milling machine or something. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this edge over here. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna use this edge as a, as a visual reference because this edge is pretty much square and perpendicular. So it's essentially at a 90 degree as far as the this way goes. So if we were to check that with a square square, you know, it would be pretty square that way. And it's also gonna be 90 degrees this way. So we're just gonna look at that edge and line the drill bit up to it as close as possible. So it means I gotta tilt my head down and look this way, X and essentially Z, and see where we're at. The best way I can think of is to have some sort of a visual reference, because if we don't have a visual reference, then we're kind of just going off of nothing, you know? And uh, I gotta figure out, I gotta get this done. So we got no choice at this point. I've exhausted all my my other options. So we gotta helicoil it and hopefully this will work. Because if it doesn't, then we're really screwed. But it should, based on the tap. I can't think of any reason this wouldn't work. It's close, you know, it's close to this bore, but it's not, shouldn't cut the bore out. All right, I'm gonna put it in the little drill so it's a little bit more forgiving. He wants to grab too, you know? Unfortunately. That's gonna be it. It's, it's a very short hole. We're committed now, we got no choice. I mean, there's just nothing else would work. I couldn't think of anything else at least. I hope this works. If not, we're really screwed. I'm gonna start with the second tap. Instead of a straight tap, we'll go to a bottom tap because I do have some alignment here with the outside hole. And we got a bottom tap this one and we're using a, gonna use a short insert obviously. I'm gonna leave the one, two, three block on so again, I can do a little alignment here. I'm gonna have to move you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move you out of the way. We gotta get this thing started and it's, there we go. I think. There we go. I think we got it started. <laughs> Looks pretty straight too. Okay, that's bottomed. You need to pray that this one works, guys. It should. We took a chip, you know, we made a chip. Again, we just don't have any choice. Well, I'm touching the uh, this bore a little bit. I can see a little of the thread because it's not exactly straight, but that should be okay. Because, uh, you know, we can just tap the um, pin in. It taps in anyway. But, you know, anytime you do a thread or anything like that, it's gonna raise the edge of that metal. So, well, well, I can deal with that. You know, I may even have a reamer to fit that and just ream that little end out. I don't know. All right, so let's find our bottom tap now. If I got to, I, I'll, I'll grind the end of this one to make it even more of a bottom tap, but there's a bottom tap. I can feel that the hole has been compromised pretty bad from the uh, situation, so the way it's cutting, that's bottomed. There it goes, a little chip there in the end. All right, let's take a look at it first. Like I said, you can see it just touched that 
bore a little bit, but I can, I can deal with that. We know the thread insert shouldn't be any bigger than that because that's the major diameter of the insert. This is not the insert I'm gonna use, but yeah, that fits fine. Because what I did was I took another, I took my little straw here again. <laughs> Got a bug in my mouth. And I picked up the edge of that uh, counter bore, made a mark, then shoved it, <clears throat> excuse me, then shoved it into the end of the hole and made another mark. So that really should be the depth that we have to work with. And I really don't want to use a, a short one. I do have short ones. That's the one I just showed you. This one here, that's too short. So I, you know, the thing is, we should be able to get away with it even if it's a little long and it's not fully seated, but. So I am gonna visualize this again and say we should be able to get a little bit of a longer one in, which is the next length up. This would be a 120. And actually, this is actual helicoil stuff, not auto parts store junk. We should have plenty there. Because even with a margin of error, that looks pretty good. All right, the money shot. Make sure that hole's clean. I don't want to go too deep, but it looks about right. Hope there's enough room to break that tang off. I don't want to go any deeper than that. That looks pretty good. Maybe just slightly in. So I had plenty of that thread from that counter board, but let's test it with an M6, y'all. All right, I need to break that uh, tang out in the back. I think there's enough room back there to do it. Should let go, whether we can get her out or not is another matter, but. Yep, there it is. It's rare that you get to save these. Okay, there's your tang, I mean, it feels okay. I didn't want to Loctite this one because I wanted it actually lubricated to help it go in. I found something like this using Loctite on is uh, more counterproductive than it's worth. Besides, it's not going to come back out. These things are in when they're in. Okay, um, let me, uh, I got to regroup now and get a couple other things done. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll put the cover on and uh, make sure that this thing tightens up. By the way, the pin, um, it went in fine. No problem. So we got the pin in. It ain't perfect, but we should be able to get um, a torque on it and it'll work. Okay, now we'll do that other stuff. He has uh, lock washers on the other two bolts that hold this thing in on the other side, so I'm gonna put those back on, but anyway. Anyway, here's the bolt. It's the one that came out of there. All I did was cut the bad end off and dress it up in the lathe, but I'm putting a little grease on it. I also, I cheated a little bit. I also turn the shank down a little bit. That way it'll be kind of a one-off bolt, but it'll hopefully um, accommodate for that mismatch because it's just, you can't get it perfect, but let's see what happens. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Oh yeah. Crisis averted. I forgot to mention before the reason why I'm putting a new stator in is because it has a problem with the charging system that I believe is the stator because when I metered it out, it just didn't seem right. And also because it's leaking. Uh, I don't think around the, um, the rubber so much. You see how this rubber's all gooed up on the outside where, there, where it would be, uh, well, you can't really see it, but it's exposed to the outside facing the crankcase. Somebody's trying to slow this down over the years because what happens is this rubber swells up and then the oil passes through where the wires penetrate. So when, when that happens, you just got to replace the stator no matter what. And, uh, but this one, like I said, was testing poorly and the thing's not charging right. So that's why I forgot to mention it before, but yeah, we're looking good, uh, folks. And, uh, we're back in service, brand new stator. I had one in stock. It's the same stator, according to Rick's, uh, Motorsports Electrics that the 1000 takes. I, I actually checked it like three, four times to make sure. So. Uh, all I do is when I put these on, I kick it over, or bump the starter, and make sure that nothing's rubbing, and uh, then we're good. But this one was tricky because uh, it being a recessed hole, and also because I did a dumb thing and snapped a freaking tap off into it, which you saw before. Well, that's it. One thread repair in the books. Successful, luckily. 
Tell you what, had a heart attack when that happened. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I, I was losing it because that could have been a major, major thing. But a lot of times that's worked where I've been able to shoot a longer tap through a existing hole in a cover and clean up the threads, blow them out, and then put a bolt in and you're good. But I think with the pin in there and the way it was screwed up because the threads were kind of, I think, cocked. Because when I tried to put a, you said cocked, when you try to put a uh, bolt in it, even before I did the repair, it wanted to go over to the side because of the way you jacked the threads out. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, this is not video three on the KZ900. Um, that's forthcoming. That's going to drop uh, next week sometime. Uh, I just wanted to show you this thread repair. I don't want you to be confused by that. Like, I'm confused all the time. So if you want to see me be confused and do dumb things and break taps and get all upset on future videos, well, you know, all you need to do is subscribe, like, ring the bell, uh, and share, and then you get notified when I put more of that stuff up. So I hope you got something out of this, a couple of tricks to do this accurately. It's close enough, and it works. As long as it works, we're good. As always, thanks for watching this video. Don't just repair, restore. <laughs> we'll catch you on the next video.